Hey, what's up? It's Alex again, with another devlog. I'm pleased to announce that I've made a ton of progress. In my last devlog, I was just building out the basis to my game, so there wasn't really that much that made it different. Also, I realized that I didn't really talk about why I'm making this game, or what my vision is. So here it goes. As a kid, I loved games like Pokemon, Fire Emblem, and Final Fantasy Tactics Advanced. The strategy involved in these games, as well as the time you had to plot out your moves, was something that I found very interesting. Recently, mobile games scratched that itch for me. Specifically, they were Brave Frontier, Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, and Bit Heroes. While all of these games are gacha games and pay to win, they handled the turn-based genre in their own unique ways and had a wide variety of features and ways to keep the player engaged in the turn-based system. Also, these games provide excellent examples of how to do PvP in turn-based games. I want to take all these games and make a multiplayer RPG where you can venture out on a single-player mission or with a team to take on dungeons and dangerous areas of the world. Players will be able to meet up and socialize in a hub world, forming guilds, parties, and even rivalries. The hub city would also provide services to the player, allowing them to respect their character, change their character avatar, upgrade their weapons and armor, study to increase their magical abilities, and participate in PvP. As you venture out from the hub world, you encounter different biomes with different types of plants and seeds you can collect. You're then able to grow these seeds in your pocket garden. The fruit of these seeds can come in handy when venturing out into the open world, or even when crafting items or equipment. Now that I've provided some of the scope for this game, I feel like I should catch you up on where I am in development. In the last devlog, I spoke some of how scriptable objects increase the modularity of the game, and now that I've coded in a skin and ability switching system, I can finally show you how modular they really are. Using the skin scriptable object and the skin atlas scriptable object, I was able to make a catalog of different avatars for the character to use and easily switch between. And since the skin choice is saved to the player's stats scriptable object, all we have to do is switch that variable, reinitialize the player, and we have already updated how our character looks. Since scriptable objects are persistent between scenes, our character's skin is now different whenever we reference it in our player stats scriptable object. I'm also using a similar concept to this when it comes to abilities. Since our abilities are also scriptable objects, we can store a ton of information on them. The way the abilities are working so far is, you have two lists of abilities, unlocked abilities and equipped abilities. Abilities are added to the unlocked list through various activities, quests, boss encounters, and random chance drops. When an ability is unlocked, it can be added to your equipped abilities list. You may have up to four abilities on your equipped abilities list, but you must have at least one ability equipped. I created an interface to show this and allow you to switch your abilities from a menu, and we can see that the equipped abilities are the ones referenced when we enter combat. I handle things like ability animations, projectiles, and ability effects from a prefab that is also stored on the scriptable object. I also make all of the ability scripts that control the animations and projectiles inherit from the same class. This way, I'm able to trigger all of my abilities with one line of code. I also edited and included the top-down engine's inventory system into my game, creating a potion that you're now able to use to heal 50 health points. You're also able to pick these potions up off the ground, and I made it so that you're able to use items in battle. Since my last devlog, I've added sprite variables to my scriptable abilities and items so that I'm able to display what type of damage a move does or what type of item it is on the fly. I also plan on adding tooltips, but this is good for now. I know I said I was going to work on making a player hub in the last video, and I will, but I had to do some major housekeeping first. In order to guarantee a game architecture I can stand behind, I wanted to make my game use addressables. If you don't know about Unity, addressables are something that allow you to change your game without pushing out new builds. This will be important when I want to tweak things in the game, such as spell damage or boss health. And since it's going to be a multiplayer game, this is going to be even more important. Also, following the examples provided in the Unity Chop Chop tutorial, I pieced together my own scriptable object event system to drive switching and loading scenes. Since when we initialize the game, the first thing we will see is the main menu, 
I worked on that first. I found some really good tessellating background artwork by this Twitter user. I drew some very simple birds and animated them flying over the background with particles and sprite sheet animations. And boom, my main menu was born. Lastly, I applied and got into the Steamworks program. I'm not really sure what happens next. If you have any advice for making a storefront page, I'd love to hear it. Anyways, I think that catches you up to now. All of this was done in like the last week and a half, and I'm still working on the game every day. If you liked the video, please leave a like, and if you want to keep seeing updates, consider subscribing. Thank you.